30 miles north of here, just last summer, we actually proved that this tech works. Uh, and we've demonstrated to the world that we can build the technology that's going to transform uh, transportation. We're going to build the first new mode in a while. So we're now looking for those routes around the world that will allow us to take that prototype and build a commercial offer. Where, where will that first place be? It could be, we've got 16 projects that could, we're working with could governments. Could be Nevada first? Uh, it probably won't be in the U.S. first. Okay. It's more likely to occur outside the United States, perhaps in the Middle East, where we've been working for a while. When do you think the first one? We think in 2018 we'll be able to identify the first of those projects that will go into production. But by when do you think it'll launch? When we look at our roadmap to deliver the, the world's first working Hyperloop, we think by 2021 we'll be at the stage where we've actually been able to construct and deploy a full-scale system and then working with regulators for safety certification and actually the regulations required to introduce a new mode of transport between 2021 and the months and years after that, we think will go into production, but probably with cargo first. Your name is getting a lot longer. Virgin Hyperloop One, now Richard Branson is involved. He's chairman. What's the day-to-day -day like with him? Is he hands-off? Is he very hands-on? I think Richard Branson is going to give credibility to our company with an entrepreneur that spotted this idea when he visited us right up the road in Las Vegas and went, man, you guys are delivering. So imagine Richard Branson talking to government talking to future investors. Is that the most important role? You I, think I, he'll play those I, partnerships with governments where he's already established transportation links? I think that's a hugely important role for us. Also talking to uh, investors and I think giving us that special touch about the experience that will differentiate our mode of transportation against the others. Uh, he has a very keen sense of, uh, of what people want and I think that'll be hugely valuable as we go through the next few years of commercializing our tech. You guys have had a lot of turnover at a very high level, some very serious accusations about sexual harassment that have been denied by now former employees of your company. There's no way that can't hinder a company. How do you handle that? Well, the first thing we did is I think we, we announced very quickly a new chairman uh, to take over uh, uh, Shervin's position uh, as co-chairman. And that was for us a really important statement for us to make. And now with Richard Branson uh, as chairman, I think that's been a very, very fast and effective transition. Do you think that maybe this is a more acute problem in the startup world because so many startups don't have the HR organization part of a big company? That's part of what we built at Hyperloop. We are a startup. We've got 300 people. Uh, we have a great uh, team that we brought in, an executive team uh, of experienced leaders. So uh, it's not a bunch of 20-year-olds uh, running around. Uh, what we have done is absolutely validate that our environment stands for one of absolutely no, no harassment. Uh, we've continued to train our employees and managers. Uh, we're not perfect, as no company is yet, but I think we're really, really headed in the right direction to build values that will sustain us for the decades ahead, and uh, I think we're in pretty good shape. There are so many sexy companies at CES that have so much buzz. So what should I use as a measurement, especially when it comes to your company, to figure out, are you just buzz, or do you have the real grit to make it? Yeah, I think it's the ability to deliver. You can have a vision, but if you can't execute, and when you look at what we did in 10 months, 10 months in building an entire prototype, a full-scale system, uh, I'm blown away by that. As you look at us to the next year in 2018, our, we have two clear goals. We're going to find the customer that wants to, work, to build the world's first production hyperloop. We're going to leverage that to raise the next round of capital to continue to finance this business. We're up to 300 million. So We're you'll have signed that deal by this time next year when you and I are meeting at CES 2019. If we are able to execute, then we'll have signed that deal. And the way you should test us is our ability to execute.